Plus, his phones get confiscated. Yep. And I have a new iPhone. <laughs> I don't, but I will get one to somebody. Uh, thanks for being here this morning, uh, this afternoon. Appreciate it. We have some exciting things going on today. Yes! Yes, yes very do. exciting things. And to introduce the, what we're going to be up for today, I'd like to, to bring up our team president. He is a family man. Yeah. He's been with Toastmasters for, for a number of months now. He's <laughs> becoming well-versed in Toastmasters program at our local uh, city of industry chapter. He's so please help us. Shop. Please put your hands together for our esteemed president, Mr. Jesse Alvarado. Arvaz, thank you for that fired up introduction. Great stuff. Thank you. Well, Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure being here with you. Having you here this afternoon. We're going to get started and do me a favor, boss. I was so excited about your introduction that I forgot my agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Well, let's get started. We're going to start with our invocation. Okay, please all stand. And for that, we're going to have Beatrice Yuli to guide us with the invocation. Uh, we're going to bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this awesome day, this beautiful day, Lord. Bless each and every one of us here, Lord. We've come with great expectations, Lord. Lord, uh, help us with our talents, Lord. Multiply them, Lord, that we go outside and brave the storm, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Please remain standing. Now we're going to do our pledge. And for that, we're going to have Bobby Consego to lead us with the pledge. Here, let's put our right hand over our heart. <coughs> and follow me. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic of which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. You may, you may be seated. Okay, and I would like to introduce our toast master today. Very excited to introduce this awesome member, Mr. Roy Fisher. Yay! Uh, is there a to see uh, anybody to be up there? Yeah, just seeing how many people can read up there. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, good job. Well, it's a lot of fun to be here as your Toastmaster. It's even more fun to realize that I didn't even know that the job of Toastmasters was written out in our manual, Ooh. and therefore realize that I blew it before I ever got here. For future reference, the Toastmaster is supposed to contact everybody during the week prior to the meeting to make sure everybody has prepared for their jobs, review of the top, topic to master the things, uh, talk to the general evaluator, confirm that he has all of his assignments straight, uh, and prepare introductions for each of the speakers, none of which I've done. <laughs> uh, so perhaps when it comes my time to do a speech again, I'll talk about the things you're supposed to do with a Toastmaster. <laughs> it is quite a job. Uh, but I can also see where it would really directly affect the meeting, the flow, and how much fun you're going to be having if the Toastmaster really has his act together, which I don't have today. Uh, so we'll just kind of wing it with the things that I uh, have seen and heard other people doing. So the, the first thing I'm going to do following the agenda is introduce the things on here, including and beginning with Jesse giving us our mission statement. And Adolfo, if you'd be on the tape online, so you're ready to go with the all counter explanation. So, Jesse? Okay, here we go. Okay, the mission of the Toastmasters Club is to provide a mutually supported and positive lear learning environment in which every individual member has the opportunity to develop oral communication and leadership skills, which in turn foster self confidence and personal growth. You're the grammarian, you're on deck. Next up is Adolfo as all counter. All right. I'll be providing a report on accounting on the individuals that speak, either speakers or anybody that speaks on stage. Okay. And I will count all those filler words like I, I, you know, you know, you know what I mean. You know. <laughs> 
And at the end, I've got a report about that. Thank you. All right, good job. Jesse, you're on deck as the timer, and Boz, you're up as grammarian. As a grammarian, we all want to uh, expand our vocabulary, and we have the word of the day is, it's pronounced primaviral. Primaviral. Primaviral is up in or pertaining to early springtime. So, use an example, a sentence, yet. Could it ever be truly captured, the former primaveral joy? Which kind of means, like we're in springtime, right? I'd like to give another example if that's confusing, because that was confusing to me. So, um, <laughs> so it, it's an adjective. It describes a noun. It's, it describes the springtime. So this is early springtime. So we could say something like, Wow, what a primaveral day today is. Early springtime day, right? Yeah, it's so gloomy outside. Mm. Huh? Still confusing, but it's a good job. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure you yeah. use this. Oh, so, so what is today the first day of spring? Yesterday? I don't know. Yes. Today, today yeah, is. So you can't yeah. get much earlier. Perfect. So, so today That's is why they had the day. Yes, it, yes. There, there you go. go. <laughs> there you go. So make sure you use that in your, uh, you know, your um, daily table, table day. topics. Speech that you're gonna give. All right, good job. Uh, Adolfo, you're on deck as vote counter or timer. Jesse, would you? Yes, I'll go to the front. So I don't... Okay, I'll be in charge of uh, managing the being a timer for the uh, for speech. It's five to seven minutes. The green light will come on. At five minutes, the yellow light in six minutes, and the red light seven minutes, and the, after that you have 30 seconds to wrap up. Evaluation is two to three minutes. The green light will come on at two two minutes. The yellow two and a half, and red at three minutes, and I have 30 seconds to wrap it up. Table topics one to two minutes. Green light will come on at one minute. Yellow light minute and a half, and a red light at two minutes and 30 seconds to wrap up. Got it. Yeah, got it. <laughs> All right. And Adolfo, yes, vote counter. I'll collect all the votes for all the speakers <laughs> and table topics and evaluator using this form, please. Don't forget to use this first portion of the form to give some feedback to the speakers. Thank yes. you. All right, good job. <laughs> Alright, we'll come to the next portion of our meeting, which is my introduction of the evaluators and the speakers. The speakers are going to be uh, Karina and Elmer, and our evaluators are going to be Bobby and Beatrice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got that straight. And for future reference, uh, one of the things I noticed from this description of the Toastmasters is that I'm supposed to be prepared to have a real introduction for you. So, when you're preparing to do your presentations, it would be greatly helpful for you so that you don't wind up with somebody like me making some ridiculous introduction on you. It's totally out of phase with whatever you're doing. Um, and provide the, the Toastmaster with an introduction uh, of maybe 25 to 50 words so that he can set the audience tone for you. So, when you're writing your speech the next time, uh, Take the time to write out some type of a little bio or a, whatever it is that you want said uh, versus me making up stories about you. <laughs> so, that said, I'm going to introduce, after a story I'm about to make up about Karina, that I had heard that she... <laughs> uh, I know that we're going to have to be a little sympathetic about Karina this morning because I understand she was out carousing until like <laughs> one in the morning. So Carousing. give her a little slack, <laughs> and with all with that said, and uh, I got to think of something great to say about Elmer. But Karina, you're on. <laughs> all right. For the of order, uh, yes. We uh, we evaluate. We give the objectives for during this speech, so everybody would uh, understand what she's trying to do. <clears throat> she's doing. Karina is doing project number three of the competence communication manual. Project number three has these objectives. Project which is get to the point. Objectives, select a speech topic and determine its general and specific purposes. 
organize the speech in a manner that best achieves the, those purposes, ensure the beginning, body, and conclusion, reinforce the purposes, and reject sincerity and conviction and control any nervousness you may feel. Why do you this nose? Very <laughs> <laughs> the her title is Delta. Delta? Delta. Mm -hmm. Delta Airlines. All right. Karina? All right, give it up. Karina, she's fired up. Karina's subject is Delta. Delta by Korea. All right. What was the time? Delta. Five to seven minutes. Okay, got it. Mr. Toastmaster and Mr. President, before I start talking about Delta, I would like to ask if any one of you are animal lovers. Oh, good, good. So if you are animal lovers, you will like my story. And if you are not, Jesse, <laughs> hopefully by the end of my story, I'll turn you around and you might find compassion when you see a dog or cat the next time around. Okay, Delta. The word Delta is D period, E period, L period, T period, A period. Delta stands for dedication and everlasting love to animals. Dedication and everlasting love to animals. It started in about 1970s by a man named Leo Grillo. Leo, for the longest time when he went to bed, he started having this dream about a dog. Every night, he would dream of this dog, just sat there and looked at him. And he dreamed that for the longest time. But Leo was an animal lover, and he didn't think much of it. Then one day, he was driving to his friend's house, and he saw a dog on the sidewalk, a black Doberman. It looked exactly like the dog he has in his dream. He pulled over, stopped his car, and approached the dog. The dog looked hungry, thirsty, tired. So when Leo approached him and put him in the car, he didn't even struggle or bark at him. He was just too weak. And instead of going to his friend's house, he turned around, he went back home. He bathed the dog, he fed the dog, took the dog to the vet for a full examination. So since that day, they became good friends. They went everywhere together. They were inseparable. He named the dog Delta. And then one weekend, when Leo and Delta were hiking in the mountain, they came across 35 dogs in a campground, 35, big and small, abandoned in a campground. So Leo called the animal shelter. In fact, he called several of them from different counties, but all of them gave him the same answer. They would take all those dogs in just to euthanize them because they couldn't have the facility or place big enough to house all these 35 dogs. So Leo, instead of turning them to the animal shelter, he just left them in the campground, but he made a decision. He is not going to turn, he wasn't going to turn them into the shelter just to be killed. He left them in the campground, but he went back the next day, and the next day, and the next day over a period of time to bring them food and water. Eventually, he was able to find an abandoned warehouse, and he housed all those 35 dogs. And this is the beginning of Delta's century. This is the world's largest no-kill, care-for-life shelter for dogs and cats. All those animals are abandoned animals in the wilderness. They were there star starving, no water, no food, and in constant fear that they might be killed by coyote or any type of wild animals. So Leo and his staff, the job is to go to the wilderness, find these animals, bring them back to the shelter, and nurture them to good health. And these animals get to stay there for life 
until their natural death. This shelter, this place right now, is in the high mountains of Los Angeles. It's just maybe two hours away from here, in the high mountains of Los Angeles. And it's 115 acres now. No. It houses approximately 1,500 dogs and cats and a few no. horses. About 800 dogs, 700 cats. And in the last few years, he rescued about 20 horses. He kept them there for good. The dogs live in straw bell houses, which keep them warm in the winter and cool in the summer. And there's also built in big swimming pools for them to play in the summertime. The cats are either indoor or outdoor, with fence in rooftops, so they are protected. There are also two hospitals on the campus with full medical staff to examine them, make sure they're in good health, and to give them vaccine every year to keep them healthy. There are also a lot of construction workers on the site because they have to be constantly building and repairing all these houses for the dogs and cats, especially this animal abandonment population is increasing every day. Not to mention there are like at least a thousand dogs and cats that got euthanized on a daily basis. And take a minute, sit back and think for a minute for yourself. Just imagine yourself as the black doberman or as the dog and cat running in the wilderness, abandoned by whoever, by your owner, by the animal shelter, by the pet owner pet shop owner, just think. Imagine you are that dog or cat running in the wilderness or in the bare mountains, no food, no water. How would you feel? Now these are all helpless animals that if we as humans do not take care of them, they will have no help, they will eventually starve to death. So I think it is a very lowball action on the part of Leo to start the sanctuary. Not too many people will have this idea or try to spare the time to devote all the, all the care and attention to animals. I think something's wrong with that, right? It's not. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> no, I, I screwed up. <laughs> so, so, the next time when you have a spare dollar, think of Leo, think of Doctor. How would you like to spend that spare dollar? Just think that one dollar for them can go a long way. You can stretch that dollar a long way and you can save a lot of animals. After all, cats and dogs are men's best friend. They are your companion. They are loyal to you. And the most important thing is, they never talk back to you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right, got... I was trying to roll with that. <laughs> <laughs>
It's an honor for me to evaluate Elmer today. Uh, what we are looking for is he has to present a speech that uses two or more visual aids. The visual aids selected must be appropriate for the message and audience and must be displayed correctly with ease and confidence. The speaker is to incorporate what he or she has learned in previous projects about purpose, organization, word usage, body language, and vocal variety. The speaker must also, um, the speaker also is to use appropriate suggestions from the evaluations received and thoroughly research the subject. So, I present to you Elmer. <laughs> and the time will be uh, five to seven minutes. All right. Elmer is a resident of Artesia. He's been a Toastmaster member for five and a half years. He's the controller at Alto Systems in Pomona. His speech is entitled, It's, oh more, it's more Fun. Yeah. <laughs> See, now doesn't it help? Oh, it doesn't we do an introduction, it? people find out about you. Isn't it amazing? Nauseous. <laughs> yes. Uh, his speech title is More Fun in the Philippines, and when I was there as a young man at Subic Bay, it was a lot of fun. So let's introduce Elmer. Yeah. I don't think he's going right. to talk about fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I have to move this over here. Can we dim the light, or are you okay? okay. Yeah, you can. I'll do it. Maybe. One more. Council will do the other one. There, there you go. go. All right. Showtime. Showtime. That's <laughs> it. Okay. <clears throat> Let me ask you this question. Where in the world you can find a country rich in history and beauty. Philippines. Okay. I'm referring to my country where I grew up, where I was born, where I spent my childhood and my <coughs> early mature life. <coughs> but before we go to the details, let me give you some more information about the Philippines. The Philippines is a group of 7,107 islands forming an archipelago. Well, it depends if it's a low tide or high tide. <laughs> it is nestled between, Ty between Taiwan on the north and Borneo in Malaysia on the south. On the east is the vast Pacific Ocean, and on the west is the South China Sea. Its population right now is about 100 million people, very productive people. English is widely spoken and is the second language, it's the medium of instruction used in the, in, in the Philippines. It's main product, it's mostly agricultural, but now it's leaning towards in industrialization. So for the next five to seven minutes, fellow Toastmasters, sit back, relax, as I will try to take you on a virtual tour of the Philippines because it is more fun in the Philippines. <laughs> Welcome aboard Philippine Airlines. I'll be your pilot and at the same time your tour guide. Philippine Airlines has the notori notoriety of being late. That's why it says plane always late. But now it has improved its reputation. Fasten your seatbelt as we land, as we're landing now to the Ninoy Aquino International Airport, the gateway to the Philippines. As we get out of custom, we're going to be traversing this Roas Boulevard in Manila on our way to our hotel, which I have already reserved for you guys. Manila Hotel, the oldest hotel in the Philippines, facing a vast recreational park, Rizal Park facing Manila Bay, where you can view the sunset in Manila Bay. And of course, after a brief relaxation, a brief rest, let's enjoy Manila's nightlife.
What do we have here? What about dinner by the bay wall, you know, close to Manila Bay while watching the sunset? Or enjoy the nightlife in one of its clubs or entertainment centers in Manila? Or if you're on more action, you can go to this Air Force One where anything goes, especially for a man. <laughs> like that. <laughs> so let's all go back to the hotel, sleep, and the following morning we're going to be driving north of the Philippines. And I will take you on a ride. So from Manila, we're going to go to the northern part of Luzon. And we'll be riding this jeepney. Whoa. Jeepney comes from the words jeep and jeepney, a North American English term for vehicle for hire. The original jeepney were just altered and refurbished World War II jeeps left by the Americans after the World War, after the World War II. Where engines and chassis were salvaged and metal roofs added, exterior redecorated and seats are reconfigured to accommodate more passengers. Don't underestimate this, pass, this uh, means of transportation. It can accommodate not only 12 passengers, but could, oh, could, it could accommodate 50. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so as, uh, as we're driving to the north, passing this paved as, uh, northern Luzon expressway, passing these vast plains and rice fields, this lush, luscious green forest, our first stop is where Roy spent some time of his life, Subic. <laughs> Subic, Subic is, used to be the biggest naval base of the, of the, United, of the United States, outside, outside the United States. It was, um, Philippines has been hosting this uh, naval base since, two, uh, since uh, I believe, uh, 1940s. But when the Americans left, they, trans, um, they converted it into a tourist hub and an industrial zone. <clears throat> Going further north is Baguio City. This is the summer capital of the Philippines, where the weather can hit as low as 10 degrees Celsius during winter time. And going further north is banana rice terraces. These are hand-carved rice paddies built by the natives 2,000 years ago, and had, it had withstand the test of time, and is declared by UNESCO as a world site heritage. After a brief rest, let's go south. Let's go island hopping now. First stop is Bohol Island. This is now located in the central Philippines, famous for its chocolate hills. It's called chocolate hills because it's, it resembles Kisses chocolate when it's real brown and there's so many of them in that area. Ooh. You would encounter this animal, it's, only, it's endemic to the island. It's called Tarshir, the smallest monkey in the world. But don't dare to look at his eyes or you will turn into stone. Yay, so cute. Of course, we won't miss Boracay, the island paradise of the central of the Philippines. Famous for its sunset, white sand, and fine beaches. And of course, it's, this won't be complete without our food trip too. Let's all savor the, the, the delicious food that the island can offer. Seafood, oh, wow. lumpia, oh, yeah. succulent oh, roasting, oh, oh. curry curry, this is yeah. a, uh, yeah. with peanut sauce, oxtail with peanut sauce. And of course, the tropical fruit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And this food trip will not be complete without this famous egg. Mm -hmm. you, won't be a you won't taste the Filipino exotic food without trying this one. Balut. It is a hot, um, semi fertilized embryo, boiled, and it's very good for as an appetizer. And it's, they said it's, it's aphrodisiac to some people. It's in your <laughs> Then we can enjoy the sights and sounds of Boracay, do a lot of activities, wow. sailing, surfing, and of course the fine white beaches. 
Let us explore Palawan. Palawan is right here. And it's the home of one of the seven wonders of nature, the underground river of Palawan. It is an 8.2 kilometer underground river. Wow. And it's flowing through the, through the ocean. Palawan is the most protected province in the Philippines, most, uh, mostly um, a lot of greens <coughs> and it's also the home of one of the biggest coral reef area in the, in the world, the Tuba, Tubataha Reef. It is the home of a thousand, wow. thousands and thousands of a, a species of fish and corals wow. and it's also a protected site by uh, UNESCO. Do you guys agree? Isn't it more fun in the Philippines? Yes. Truly. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster. All right, how's it going? Good job. That was nice. Again, give it up for Elmer. <laughs> it's always great to hear someone talk about where they came from. But I don't talk very much about Tijuana. <laughs> uh, let's see, where were we before this doctor <laughs> became so seriously distracted? It told me we were supposed to have fun, so this is my version of fun. Uh, all right, so those are our two speakers. Now it's time for me to call on our timers report. And as I recall, we have a timer. Yes. <laughs> Karina took seven minutes what? and 27 seconds. Wow, perfect. Very good. What is it? And, sorry, what 727? is it? 727? 727? Fabulous. Awesome. And Elmer, nine minutes. <laughs> what? So what we enjoyed it. Oh, Elmer took nine minutes. So we don't get to work? So he qualified five to seven minutes. They always have to take supposed to be about this. Yeah, I went to a... So we enjoyed it. So good. You got the message across. Nobody quit for it? It's more fun than the same thing. Tell them it's fun and It's interesting. We all we have these timers and things. But it's there's a purpose for it. Have you ever thought about, you know, we all get accustomed to the fact that there are red lights and we stop, so what? Yeah. There's no cars coming, why are we sitting here, right? <laughs> Just because the next guy coming down at 200 miles an hour has a green light, if you pull out in front of him, there's a big problem. Well, why is the reason that we have this five to seven minutes? Why do we have timing on our speeches? It's to be sexier. <coughs> sexier. Otherwise, we'll be here <laughs> Well, in, re in real life, if you're go not going to be, if you're going to talk in an infinitely amount of time in a party and the booze is flowing, that doesn't matter. <laughs> but most of the time when we're going to be asked to speak about something, the person who's putting us into the program, whatever the purpose is, you're going to have a limited time allocation, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And if you're not able to tailor your speech and be get it done in that period of time, mm -hmm. you're going to only be half done because nobody speaks less than the time that's given to them, including mm -hmm. me. But you need to be conscious when you're making your outlines, practice it, mm -hmm. and be prepared to do it within your time frame. Because mm -hmm. when you're asked to speak about something, be it speak about your home country, mm -hmm. uh, same thing that we do with the uh, Table topics. Mm -hmm. Give a quick comment. Yes. You're giving a presentation. And normally when you give a speech somewhere, even if you want to always ask when someone's asking you to speak on a subject at a meeting, mm -hmm. ask them, how much time do I have? Are you asking that? No. no I'm, just <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about that. I'm not asking anything. I'm just suggesting that in the future, when you're going to give a speech or somebody asks you to speak, that you ask how much time do you want me to take? Or how much time do I have? Obviously, you'd be able to give a lot better presentation if you have a five-minute or a 30-minute. Okay, so anyway, 
that part of it done. Let our tabletop, I'm going to at this point introduce uh, who's the, who we have. Uh, vote for our best speaker. No, best speaker. no, 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 no need okay, to vote. So that's it's done. Heavy. All right. So now we're going to introduce our table topics master. Ooh, who is Ooh, All right, yeah. Yeah. Can we shut this off? Is this, I should yeah. leave it on. Uh, yeah, we can do it. So we can save the light lamp instead of replace oh. lamp. Let's do what? Yeah, let me turn that off. I'll take one second. Uh, we have lights on. Make sure you can see it. It'll take a second too. Okay. So there we go. <laughs> um, as a table topics master. I have three topics, and I'll be two. I mean, I'll be asking one of you randomly to come up here and talk about the topic. Mm -hmm. The reason for this is to to be able to be in a situation where you you meet someone to be able to come up with something to talk about. First, so. Yes. Oh, do we have rules? Yes, we have rules. <laughs> <laughs> yes, rules. The rule is to take each topic that I give you, you have one minute, one between one and two minutes. The red light will go on one minute. I'm sorry, the green light will go on one minute. That means you complete the time that you need to complete. One and a half, the orange light. The red light will come on in two minutes. At that time, you have 30 seconds to conclude your, your speech, table topic speech. <laughs> and then at the same time, make sure you use the word of the day. Prima barrel. Okay? Any other questions you may have? So, the quest, first question is, if you can clone yourself, what would you do, good or bad? Okay? If you could clone yourself, what would you do, either good or bad? I'd like to call upon Mr. Bobby Consego. Oh, Bobby <laughs> oh, Consego! Oh, oh, I understand, that's why I call him. Hey. See? Quick, so quick, quick, clone yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Two bobbies in the house. So, uh, let me repeat my the topic. <coughs> Welcome. Uh, if you can clone yourself, what would you do, either good or bad? Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Wow. I, especially at this time of the year, which is prima vera. <laughs> There's nothing that I could think of having a greater time than cloning myself to be a goldfish. <laughs> Why do I say goldfish? Because a goldfish is found in an aquarium, always fed constantly and you have all the time in the world to play around <laughs> and you know open your mouth and, you know talk and watch the people looking at you and then you also look at them <laughs> I mean it's the best time of life you have you know oh I couldn't there's no stress you don't have to worry about anything I mean it's a good life so why wouldn't I clone myself to be a goldfish? <laughs> Mr. Table Topic Smith. Alright! Ah, that's good. That's very good. I want to be a fish now. In the Philippines. <laughs> okay, that was good. Second, if you were born the opposite sex, how would you feel? If you're born the opposite sex than who you are, if you're a man, think if you're born a woman. If you're a woman, think if you're a man. I'd like to call on Miss Yuli, please. Oh, no! Yes, oh, yes! <laughs> hey, let me see if you're a man. <laughs> All right. How tough you are. Wow. So the question is, if you're born the opposite sex, mm -hmm. how would you feel? Wow. Gotta hear this one. <laughs> Good afternoon everyone. How's everyone feeling today? Great. Okay.
Okay, so my first step will be my primaveral longings <laughs> to explore the world. That would be one thing. And looking at my profession, I had problems with my with being a woman because <laughs> every pastor is supposed to be a man that's what people consider that and I didn't know that till I went around searching for a church and I was surprised I couldn't take this I said how dare people say this we are all made with the same spirit just because our parts are different you want me <laughs> you don't so what do I do go and have a sex change is that what you want me to do come on there's something really bad going on here so what I did was I went through the scripture and I took out these verses that contradicted a woman being a pastor so I said okay I'm going to justify all this I've made a slide show and I sent it to so many people I think about 500 people and I was able to, the women included, and women were also convinced, the ones who were like trying to point fingers at me. So I don't know how you picked this question, but it suited me to the tip. So thank you very much, Mr. Toastmaster. All right. Well, uh, you might be the perfect person for that. Good job. Good. Uh, third, how would you spend your last day on, on Mother Earth. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Going from a man to a woman, woman to a man. How would you spend your last day on Mother Earth? Mother Earth. Mr. Jesse Alvarez. Oh, oh, Mr. Jesse. Well, I read that this one then. Yeah, women. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> the question again? Just regard that comment. The question again. What was the question? Oh, well, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, how would you how would you spend your last day on Mother Earth? Okay. How would you spend my last days right in this Earth? Last day. La my last day. One also. day only. One, one day, day only. One day only. One day. That's kind of short, but you know what? <laughs> I'll make it fun. I will go places in, in the world that I've never been to. I'll go have some fun. I'll take a jet. If I, you know, I take a jet. Go maybe Spain. Go places I've never been, go visit families that I've never visited before, go be a contribution. Um, maybe another country that needs some help. I would just try to do as much as I can in the one single day. That way if I'm gone, if I'm gone from this earth, that way I'm fulfilled in certain things that I, that I wanted to do, that I had the opportunity, but only one day to accomplish the, the goals and dreams that, that I had in mind. And definitely, hey, definitely, I want to have a primavera, long-term life when I'm gone. Yes. And absolutely, well, thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. The green light just came on. Why do I go like that? I'm sitting there like Well, I'd like to thank all the participants. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah Good work. The, um... <laughs> Discord, who, I'm supposed to talk about the word of the day also, right? Oh, God. Um, the word of the day was use. Out of context, I'm going to Out of context. <laughs> but it was used, so the use of the word did apply, so we qualified. But again, understanding what it means, <laughs> it wasn't there. So we all understand what this means, right? Because we need to really get involved with this language of English and learn, expand our vocabulary. I used it right. Yes. Thank you. I'm not pointing you. Okay. So thank you very much. Um, now what I'd like to do is uh, bring up our our Toastmaster today to to conclude the rest of the session. Here. Mr. Bliss. I mean. Mr. <laughs> 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 oh that was great. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce our first. Uh, the, our general evaluator, who oh, is okay. Adolfo. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention. Okay. He, forgot some... yeah, he forgot some stuff. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh. the timer's report. Well, stay up here with me. Okay. Um, uh, I'd like to call for timer's report on table topics, please. Okay. Bobby took one minute and 12 seconds. You qualify for timing.
uh, Beatrice, one minute and 33 seconds, she also qualified. And myself, I took one minute and five seconds, I qualified. <laughs> Thank vote. you very much. Vote, vote, vote. Oh, yeah. Please uh, vote for the top uh, table topics, best table topics. objective is concerned, I think she met the objective. The general, in every speech there's a, there's four types of uh, speech objectives. It's either you, you enter, you inform, you persuade, mm -hmm. you entertain, or you inspire. So, to me, the way I perceive it is with more of the, to inform. So that's the general, that's the general <coughs> objective. And what was the specific? The specific message is about compassion for abandoned animals. And she talked about exactly that, you know, compassion. So that was her point. How to inform the audience about the plight of these animals and to encourage them or to draw their compassion and sympathy for these abandoned animals. It was, uh, at least for me, it, it, she did that successfully. And mm -hmm. I'm sure you also felt the same way. So that's very good. The other thing that I like about uh, Karina's speech was, I think she, she, she felt comfortable. She, she had all this information about Leo Grillo, who happens to be the founder of this sanctuary of animals. And I was, that was uh, very interesting. So her, her speech was focused on the story of how the sanctuary, animal sanctuary, came about, starting with Leo Grillo. Now, uh, how would we make this uh, more interesting speech? The first one is in the opening. I would suggest that you start right away with the story of Leo Grillo and say, she was driving down the freeway and, and then saw her, the, the road and saw this animal, felt so compassion and stuff. And then you say, ladies and gentlemen, or fellow Toastmaster, he felt so compassion he brought this dog back. So that would draw the instead of explaining some unnecessary, uh, or providing unnecessary statements. 
that would save you time. The other thing that I would suggest is <clears throat> you personalize the stories. Use, uh, give out the name of that dog and give up uh, or come up with other abandoned story, uh, about stories of abandoned animals after that. And maybe that would be even more. So, if you, let's say that black Doberman, you could probably give a name for that Doberman. And then say that, you know, yeah. in the end you say, uh, this black Doberman, maybe you should, I don't know, whatever, you know, gray or whatever, you know, need your help. Thank yes. you very much. Woo! Who's the yeah. Hey, who's the general evaluator? Not me. Oh, 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 there you go. Thank you, Romeo. From Bobby, we're gonna, gonna, we're gonna hear the evaluation for um, the next speaker. No, we're gonna have who's gonna be the evaluator? Beatrice. Okay, so we're gonna hear we're gonna hear Beatrice now. And please let's welcome Beatrice. Yeah. All right. Hey. honored to give an evaluation for our Elmo. Being here for six years and I here to evaluate him is really an honor. So let me start with, have you all really gone to the Philippines? Can you say that you have seen the Philippines by now? No? You didn't feel like yeah, that? Yeah. I would say that, you know, that you've taken me to the Philippines. It was so vivid and so visual and so full of life out there. Personally, every time I heard about the Philippines, I never really understood what it was about. If you would ask me, could we, should we go for a holiday? And if someone would say Philippines, I would say, no, I'm not going to do charity work. <laughs> that was my image. Charity. Yeah, because everyone who I talked about was, they would talk about Philippines in that way. But here, we traveled to the north, and we traveled to the south, and we saw the coral reef. Oh my goodness, I can hardly wait to go to that beautiful coral reef. It was so beautiful. And the food, oh my gosh, I thought something else about the food. But you changed my mind, really, Elma. That was such a beautiful um, presentation. And the rice terraces in the north, and so many new things I learned today and about the seven wonders of nature? What was that about, underground river? <laughs> oh my goodness, so I have to go home and tell my husband that we gotta go there to the coral reef. And now coming to what the book has to say, whether you met up with all the objectives, I would say, uh, yes. Uh, were the visual aids appropriate for your speech and message? Excellent, what do you think, right? Then did each visual aid help you understand and remember the, remember the speaker's point? Of course, yes. It's as if we traveled there. Then was each visual aid clearly visible? Yes. So it's excellent, excellent according to the book here. Now how clear was the speaker's purpose really changed my mind and want me to take a vacation, my next vacation in Philippines. It was that good. Now, if I would suggest that there should be, oh, some improvement to this. <laughs> Forgive me, you can take it out in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that when there was a slide where you actually was, uh, you were reading about um, the word uh, jeep jeepney. Maybe if you had to memorize that and just not read every word because then it was distracting us at that moment because we wanted to read it, then you were reading it, and then we were wondering, should we read it? And maybe that took up some of your time. So maybe if you just had to give us a succinct uh, part of that, <laughs> then it would work out. With that, I should say, well done, Elma. Looking forward to more speeches. All right. All right. Thank you very much, oh. Peters, for that uh, evaluation of Elma. Now, at this time, I want to call for the time of support on our <coughs> evaluators. Okay, here we go. Bobby, took three minutes and 38 seconds. 
He did not qualify for time. What? Yes. And Beatrice oh. took three minutes and 40 seconds. Just oh, kidding. No. Just <laughs> <laughs> she took three minutes and 10 seconds. Uh, That's okay. She qualified for time. Wow. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, good job. Thank you, Mr. Tanger Report, for giving us an energetic report. Okay, now next. Scary one. At this time, we're going to vote for... No, no, we don't have a name. No, we don't vote. We, we have a winner already. But we are gonna, oh, we're going to have a, a next segment report given by an evaluation of an individual that did the accounter. Who is the accounter? Oh, it's me. You are the accounter. The accounter report. I must say that today I was very careful and very attentive at everybody that spoke here. Oh, wow. Did my best, I think, today. I was there with the thing here to the point that it's your turn to, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> so I would say, I, I, I have to say that today I did hear the words, particularly, but, so, you know, uh, however, I'm going to say Bobby only used the word so one time inappropriately. The rest of the words were used within the context of what was being said correctly. Yeah. I did not hear, I did not hear anything beyond that, you know, like an hour. I didn't hear any um or anything like that. So I think we need to congratulate each other for that. Yeah. All right, that's the report. Thank you very much. Now next, uh, I would say uh, as a group, as an evaluation for the group, I must say that everything was set up here correctly. We missed the table, table, the rush that we for the yeah, the stand for the board. Uh, we put everything outside correctly. Uh, everybody's here energetic and dynamic and with enthusiasm and that's great. A lot of uh, energy is felt and that's a plus, right? Mm -hmm. One thing. It's always very important for our group that we need to remind ourselves is to be here on time. time. <laughs> on, time. on time means the, the meeting starts at 12, but we want to be here at least 15, 10 minutes before the meeting, right? Yeah. Uh, we want to organize or help organize. Um, other than that, that will be the evaluations I'd like to do for the meeting. And at this moment, you know, there say any other comments as an evaluation that would like to be given by anybody? I would like to return the control to our Toastmaster, Roy Fisher. All right, Mr. Roy. It's great, it's been a really good meeting, and at this point, I like it. Excuse me. At this time, I would like to thank everyone, and I'll turn the meeting back to our president. All right, let's do it. All right, Rose, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Great job. We did have a lot of fun here. Yes. Especially Beatrice. What? Okay. Uh, don't forget. Uh, okay. Be going to. Okay, we have. Five minutes for session. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't forget to ready the uh, the uh, the ribbons. We definitely wanna. I wanna take the time to. Thank you all of you for continuing being a, a member, supporting our club. We're definitely uh, in, in the moment of growing our club and definitely continue inviting people in our club to really grow this club and just share the love with everybody else and empower them to definitely empower them, empower them to with the ability of public speaking. So definitely uh, thank you all for uh, being committed to develop yourself into the club. Yes. So I'd love to get a yeah. chance. We'll knock it out. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> and that's not a filler word, okay? <laughs> In other words, we just get joke, it done. Uh, Entertain us with a joke. A lot no pressure already, 10 minutes late. <laughs> 10 minutes late? Can you please use the, the, the timer for a local? <laughs> Anyone has a joke? No, uh, who's uh, gonna, uh, who's the. Uh, no, you're the one. Okay. You can tell you a joke up. as a man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, Joey was going through midlife crisis. He had a big pot belly, he had balding hair, and he felt really bad about himself. Even when he asked the not so very attractive secretary to come out with him, she declined. He said, that was it. I'm going to make a change. He went to the best gym. He 
took a diet course. He went to Toastmasters to remove his filler words and annoying, <laughs> stuttering words. And he came up polished. Then he went to uh, the most attractive girl and she said, dinner this evening. He was so happy, he went home. And then, I mean, he took a, a bouquet of flowers to her home, rang the bell. Just about <coughs> as he rang the bell, there was a bolt of lightning that struck him and he fell down on the ground. And he's like, why God, after all this? And God says, hey, that's you, Joey? I didn't know that, couldn't recognize you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's give it up for you, awesome joke. Okay, so in this order? Which is first? First? Okay. One second. All right, we're gonna we're gonna call our best table topic. That's the first one, right? Our best table topic, and that is. Da da da. Guess who that is? It's me. It's only Bobby. Let's oh. give it up. Oh. Oh. Yeah. All right, let's <laughs> for the camera. There you go. Can you welcome? Can you come in? Oh my God! <laughs> All, right. All right, here we go. Make me the fish. Make the fish face. <laughs> good job, Bobby. Absolutely, you knock it out. Did a good job. Go fish. Go fish. I thought you were gonna get some. There you go. Know about fish? Huh? <laughs> Okay, and now we're going to call our best speaker for today, Karina. Good job, Karina. You definitely knock it out. Good job. That's the evaluator. That's the evaluator. Yes, we made some minor adjustments. We'll just talk. We will adjust it later. Huh? We'll, we'll make some adjustments. We definitely... We have to buy supplies? Absolutely. Well, I ordered some, but I missed one of the... Uh, we should just put a tape on top of it. <laughs> I'll, I'll get the right one. We'll swap it. Just keep them in your purse and we'll bring it next week. <laughs> and now, our best evaluator. Hey. The person who wanted it's to Karina. become... What? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, not that thing happened. Beatrice Yuli. Yeah, uh, finally! Oh my gosh! Huh? Finally! Got it. Alright, picture. Yeah, one, two, this way. Look at that way first. Smell. Come on, Abby. Over there first. Oh, look here. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> okay, now this way. One, two, three. Yeah. Alright, nice. All right, good job. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll get it done, and now do we have any, any announcements by chance? So, one thing I want to mention, some of you may have received this card, something like this. This is going to happen the April 20th. Mm -hmm. This is the Founders Day Spring Conference, right here in the Yeah, the District Conference. You want to raise it by April 9th, or you can raise it up later, 17th, I believe. $75? Yeah, $75 for the full day. It's a full day, and uh, early bird registration is so that